Thank you. Thank you, Doctora. Uh, I went through the uh, three papers. I found, it, do we have to go by the organization as presented to us? I thought the third paper should be the first, uh, the one on do country specific characteristics matter. Don't you think so, Dr. Ibrahim? Uh, you are the boss, Dr. Majid, as you see fit. <laughs> no, because we went through the paper, I thought at, at least this one gives us a general, uh, although it is on the uh, uh, SDG and so on. But since you have it this way, and probably everyone is prepared to be uh, as such, uh, let's go as you uh, had organized it. Uh, so let's start with the first paper. The double whammy. Okay, the floor is yours and uh, and uh, Ayel. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Doctor Ayel will be uh, the presenter of the first paper uh, on uh, the overall uh, the double whammy, and then I'll then I'll take uh, the second paper on uh, labor markets. So, Doctor Ayel, please. Go okay. Doctor Ayel, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank Thank you so much. Uh, I, I appreciate to get the opportunity to present this paper to, to this forum. Um, so the title, as you all already uh, mentioned, it is Devil Wami on the Kuwaiti economy. Uh, I'll explain exactly what we mean by this Devil Wami and why. Uh, I'll take you through these uh, topics. And in all, all in all, uh, in this structure, uh, a kind of three uh, running themes uh, I want to focus on. And then the first one is, uh, it, it's a kind of complex relationships, you know, uh, starting from the name Double Wami itself. Uh, and then um, there are, there is a theoretical academic angle to it, how to, we understand the, the shocks uh, the second one is related to that slightly different, but a tricky uh, policy analysis that, that uh, relates to the theoretical uh, underpinning. And the third one is the policy dimension. The most important one is what policy issues we discern from it uh, and how we pin down the complex relationships throughout these double whammy uh, shocks. Uh, the double whammy, uh, by double whammy, we mean uh, two uh, concurrent shocks, two big shocks happening at the same time in space and time, space quit and time uh, quarter one of 2020, the coronavirus uh, pandemic and the uh, sharp fall in oil price and the oil market simultaneously. So. These shocks, even by themselves individually, are powerful enough. But when these two gigantic shocks happen simultaneously at the same time, then uh, it is, it's straightforward to imagine the uh, extent to which it messes up the economic fabric of uh, an, an economy. So we illustrate that issue using the Kuwaiti data. And the purpose here is we to quantify the macroeconomic effects. Deliberately, we zoom down to one, one indicator, the GDP effect, but uh, increase the dimension of the shocks because we want to see how a number of the shocks coming from a number of, from multiple directions uh, uh, affect the economy. And this study comes in as a context We've just finished a project which uh, Dr. Suleiman led, and uh, it's a very big project. Uh, this paper comes from just one task, and the rest, as Dr. Suleiman uh, mentioned already, uh, will be presented by Dr. Suleiman on the rest of the thing. So this one is just a subcomponent of that big project. Uh, in terms of the literature, we need to bear in mind that we are uh, trying to bring together two uh, strands, uh, literature which comes from the oil shock, and even that it ha itself has two subcomponents because 
in the literature, there is a body of literature on the impact of oil shocks on, on importing countries, the impact of oil shocks on exporting countries, different strands, and although mostly it is importing countries' case uh, dominate, but the exporting countries' case is no less significant. Um, in terms of how to handle oil shocks in, in, uh, in, in economic modeling, what the trick, it's straightforward actually. Uh, because it is the price which changed and there are relationships between prices and quantities in economic modeling in policy analysis. So the, the shock is big, but at least theoretically and, and, and methodologically in terms of uh, policy analysis, it is the uh, less tricky part of the double whammy component. But the pandemic is an altogether different story. It is uh, a very uh, complex, not really mainstreamed in terms of its economics. On the one hand, there is this, which side of the shock comes from? Is it the demand shock? Of course, there is a demand component because uh, households you know, get less income and, uh, uh, and demand will be uh, smaller. So households will, uh, will spend less there is a supply component too, because there is a uh, capital idleness, labor force idleness, and then the lockdown. So this supply versus demand side uh, makes a very interesting macroeconomic shock because it's kind of two components. And the second one is, are the shocks temporary or permanent? Uh, so some of them are permanent. Uh, depending on the number of hours and days people stay at home due to lockdown. Others are permanent when uh, days occurs and mortality reduces the size of the labor force. So there is that, that side uh, to it. So the supply side, so that, that at the very least, the two uh, temporary versus permanent and supply and demand uh, or, or uh, demand side. And the other aspect is the coverage. Um, the, the, the pandemic causes uh, disruptions to economies, but some sectors are affected less than others, or some sectors are affected more than others. Restrictive curtailment measures apply some of the sector, for example, tourism and you know, hoteling and accommodation. And then the supply uh, or demand shock to those sectors is severe, a lot more severe than the rest. So uh, for this, there, there is this theoretical and policy implications of a need to consider multi-sectoral linkage because if we just focus on the sectors which are affected uh, directly, then we lose sight of the indirect and the feedback effects economy-wide and on the rest of the, sec the sector which were not directly affected. Um, another issue worth mentioning is particularly for policy analysts, uh, dealing with pandemic shocks is the short time interval, the short time frame within which the shock happens. Once the shock happens, uh, there is no time for uh, institutions, producers, and then you know, all kinds of institutions to adjust because it is immediate. And therefore, what does that mean? Uh, for policy analysts, this has implications in terms of how to parameterize and how to apply restrictive uh, elasticities and the likes um, to capture the nature of the shock itself. And then there is the policy implication because policymakers have to grapple with and fine tune interventions depending on uh, the nature of the shock itself. Uh, in this study, we applied uh, a a recursive dynamic computable general equilibrium model, which have been evolving uh, over the years um, at uh, KISER, uh, Techno Economics uh, Division. Um, the recursive dynamic model we applied, you know, it's a CGE model. Uh, you know, in CGE models, in, in mathematical models, usually we measure things at margins, which basically means a smaller change. Sometimes economic models, policy analysis, uh, are not that suited to handle huge shocks. 
who chokes, especially when it's a double whammy, then it becomes a very tricky thing. The main thing what we are interested in is really is to uh, first to get the logic right, second to to conduct uh, simulations and get a sense of magnitude. And then, then uh, because it is not possible to apply 50% reduction of all across all variables um, or 60% reductions, then one can do a 15 or 20% reductions and then get a sense of magnitude in terms of how that propagates throughout the economy. If we know what a 20% reduction of certain key variable causes, then uh, we, we, will had, we will understand what the 60% reduction of the same variable uh, does to the economy. So I think we need to build that, that perspective. It's a matter of getting just the logic right rather than exact uh, representation of the shocks themselves. Uh, the creative model, uh, the latest version we applied is the recursive dynamic version, but it started with comparative static uh, number of uh, publications, mostly focusing on, on energy policy in the past. Uh, we had a uh, creative sum, which was developed with uh, 2013 as a base year, uh, but we are to update it to 2019, quarter four of 2019, which we used as a base quarter. And then the simulation period in this study uh, covers nine uh, quarters, uh, 2019 quarter four, the base where nothing much happened. And we start from there and apply disturbances to the economy of through different channels and run the model forward in dynamic recursive, which means solving for the model period by period and run it forward up to 2000. Uh, 21 quarter four. In terms of simulation scenarios, it is this structure. Uh, we went very detailed. We focused on GDP as an indicator, but in terms of multiplicity of the shocks, these are um, the shocks we applied. The first one is the bow scenario, as they, we call it in the jargon, which basically means if nothing happened to the Kuwait economy, if the double whammy didn't happen, what would have happened to the Kuwaiti GDP across the four quarters? That's the baseline projection. The corona shock is the most complicated component, and it has uh, five uh, subcomponents. Uh, the first one is reduction in labor force size because of mortality, which is negligible, but for the sake of completeness, we included it because we have data on it, although it is. Uh, uh, extremely negligible. The second one is reduction in labor uh, input due to lockdown. We have some sense of magnitude of starting from the you know uh, durations and then analyzing and you know uh, dividing that into quarters. Capital idleness effect, the third one, and uh, reduction in household consumption, and then finally ITC five is increase in export trade costs. Now, uh, the oil shock is more straightforward, just one big shock, which is a uh, reduction in oil prices. The second two to shocks are policy responses, which we classified into two, uh, government support to businesses, which I, we call this, you know, uh, increasing government spending, which IGC7, IGS7. And the third, the other one is more diffused government intervention post and in the middle of, uh, middle of the uh, pandemic and forward, and the kind of policies that government introduced to help businesses recover, basically reorganizing the economy, new way of doing things kind of thing, which we kind of jumble together and call total factor productivity, which happens to by shocking the efficiency parameter. The last three are combined shocks. Now we individually apply the shocks, both the negative shocks, which come through the double whammy and the policy response, which uh, comes from uh, the two policy responses. Now, 
the first combined response is the com combined shock is when all the negative uh, shocks applied, but no government response. So if all of those things happened, but government did nothing, what would have happened to the GDP? The, the, the next one is uh, one seven, all one seven measures, if double whammy happened and the government limited it as, uh, its intervention only to financial support, no other uh, total factor productivity type intervention was done. And the last one is where all the negatives happened and government did both the uh, both policy responses concurrently. So I uh, uh, all one to eight is like all of the shocks happening simultaneously. Now those shocks I just listed are are numerically uh, inputted this way. These numbers, there is no hard and fast rule about them. Uh, we can vary them, but we try to be as realistic as possible. Across time, for example, reduction in labor force uh, due to lockdown was more intense in 2020, quarter one, quarter two, then it gets smaller and smaller as you go along. The same about cap uh, negative uh, no, capture capital inputs or capital idleness effect and, and, and the likes. So um, the, the baseline is uh, basically uh, labor and capital, the stock variables changing quarter to quarter, depending the annual. Uh, uh, so the policy response is again, uh, policy response seven and eight. The first one uh, is, is, is government uh, financial support to businesses and total factor productivity. So the, the two policy responses happen kind of in terms of different intensities. Financial support happens earlier during the lockdown and gets smaller and smaller as we go along. But total factor productivity, government making major responses to help recover the economy uh, starts slowly, but increases as we go through time toward the end and during post uh, post shock uh, period. And the last three are basically combinations of the all of those shocks uh, in different combinations. Okay. Now, okay. the first one is just Good. basically. Can I, can I, the, I fix without you. Can you finish this in five minutes, please? Uh, in less than five minutes, in definitely. Your presentation, um, uh, Dr. Alcudsi will. Uh, okay, so uh, this is the, the baseline shock. Uh, I said that's kind of um, a bound scenario. The economy would have moved through the through the um, quarters this way, uh, given the assumptions we applied in the previous slides. Now this is where the crunch comes. The results. Now I present first the isolated shocks one by one. The same way on the vertical axis you have change from the base year projects in percentage terms, it's GDP we are talking about, and the horizontal axis is the quarters. And the first one is, unfortunately, I think, my, I don't know whether uh, you'll be able to read the legend because uh, I, I can't myself, to be honest, uh, because the uh, thing covers. So uh, is the legend readable to, to the rest? No. 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 I, I didn't. I didn't expect this because our thing. Is it possible to relocate this thing? All right. Okay. I moved it. Is it readable now? No. 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 Uh, do you read RFL one? Three scenarios. The three. The uh, the the all one to seven. You've got a good graph that has the blue, red, and green lines. That's interesting. Yeah, that's better now. Yeah. Okay. So yes. I, I, all I wanted you to see, no, I don't want you to see just the lines, but the legend is what matters most. So, uh, so if I, so the labor force uh, reduction has no effect; it is zero. Now about two percent, nearly two percent, fall in GDP because of labor. Uh, abstention and labor not uh, you know, during lockdown. 
stay at home and all social distance. Capital uh, idleness effect is much more pronounced. It's like about 8% reduction in GDP by the end of the simulation period, because that represents the share of capital in Kuwaiti GDP, uh, basically. Uh, reduction in household consumption, uh, just less than 2% actually, about 1% uh, on, on GDP. And uh, export trade cost is over 4% reduction. You know, I'm, I'm reading just the last point, but you know, it, it gets more and more pronounced as we progress through time. And the oil price shock has the biggest effect to about 11%. So this is the individual shocks as they come separately and plotted jointly on one uh, diagram. The policy response and if this is a kind of normal, what would have happened if the policies or government spend, spending or on supporting businesses happened without any pandemics or without any double whammy? So uh, the, the, the extent of magnitude of shock I reported earlier would have given that level of increase in GDP uh, if that happens throughout the, the periods. But total factor productivity, uh, if improved by the numer no, numerical figure I displayed in the table earlier, so the, the curvature of the two peaks the assumption I gave you earlier, government support for businesses comes much earlier, gets smaller, so the effect is getting smaller too. The total factor productivity slides started slowly mid uh, pandemic and picks up during the post pandemic period and then uh, more intensified. So uh, now the combined shocks. If all shocks happened and government did nothing, the ultimate uh, damage to the economy would be as high as nearly 35% fall in GDP. But if government uh, limited uh, it is uh, intervention to just financial support to institutions and uh, all one seven, it means uh, the blue, light blue line shows the reduction would be reduced from nearly 35% to about 25%. But if government uh, intervened in a more diffused ways and more um, substantial ways through innovations and through a new way of doing business basically to help recovery during the post uh, and mid uh, shock period, then um, the reduction could be minimized to about 11% of GDP. So government intervention can make a difference from 35% to all the way back to uh, uh, 11%, of course, this can be rejuggled when the numbers can vary depending on the assumptions we apply and in terms of the shock scenarios. Basically, this is where uh, I will end. Um, so uh, all we have done is to experiment with double whammy, multiple exogenous shocks and how to handle them uh, theoretically in a policy relevant way. Want to go? Deliberately focus on GDP. Deliberately focus on GDP mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, increase the number of shocks because that is the one which gives more rather than if we combine lots of shocks and lots of indicators, then we miss the picture. So uh, isolated shocks, quantified the size of the shocks and the impacts. Particularly, the most important point I would, I would like to under, underline is the policy synergy, particularly the financial package and the TFP uh, shock, how they reinforce each other and bring the economy back to a smaller shock if uh, the two synchronized. And of course, finally, for academic oriented uh, audience is the demand and supply side shocks, both in terms of uh, policy and theory are, are, are relevant. Uh, uh, so 
I end here. Well, thank you very much. Thank, th thank you. Thank you, Dr. Iglan. Okay, uh, Dr. Uh, Suleiman, uh, you have something to add here? Um, no, I just wanted to uh, compliment uh, Dr. Eric Glenn on a very uh, uh, impressive work that he did for the project that we did. Uh, and he did it in a very, very short period of time. Uh, and the results are extremely uh, helpful from the policy perspective, because one of the most important results that he came up with is that to safeguard the economy, the best policy uh, intervention is to increase total factor productivity and innovation in, uh, in, in the Kuwaiti economy. Um, so this is an extremely important uh, uh, finding, I think. Um, but um, uh, with that, if you allow me, you can go to our second paper, which is uh, uh, on the uh, Kuwaiti labor market under the corona uh, virus and beyond. Uh, I but, think, uh, Dr. Suleiman, this is in another session, not in this it, session. This is, not it, session. this is, I think, tomorrow. Oh, is it okay? Well, okay, we can, uh, yeah, we can uh, wait on this for tomorrow then. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, thank you very much. I also commend the the uh, paper. I thought that the, the, the paper was uh, uh, very good, and I probably have one question about the TFP. Or you know, we all know, even in the IMF paper, most of the work is on government responses, but not necessarily on the fiscal responses, but not much on the TFP. So I just later on, probably you respond to what actually the government did on that TFP, because we know what it, what our governments have done on the fiscal part, uh, the stimulus. Dr. Majid, uh, if you allow me, uh, if you don't mind, yes. Yes, I sir. just want to, I just want to alert Dr. Suleiman that it is, uh, it's not tomorrow, it is the, the session after this one. His presentation of the second paper is after in the session after this one. Is it okay? Okay, yeah. just make up your mind, guys. It's it's at the two p.m. It's at two p.m. Kuwait time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, we try to we try to finish. Uh, soon. Okay, the second paper is on the impact of uh, the uh, COVID nineteen on the economic performance of the Saudi economy, but uh, hand. And Ofisan and Fatma Mabrouk, and I think Fatma will be presenting the paper. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Or hi, or hi, Hong, or uh, Jihan, or Fatma. Um, the next, the next paper is going to be the one that's on the impact of COVID-19 uh, pandemic on the economic performance of Saudi Arabia, and Dr. Fatma Mabrouk is going to be presenting. Okay, Fatma, are you with us? Dr. Fatma, not Fatma, Fatma Sh uh, Shamsi, but Fatma Mabrouk. Uh, let me, yeah. yeah, she is on just one second. I, I see, I see her name. She's, uh, she's, uh, Dr. Fatma. Fatma Brook, I see her. Yeah. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, yeah. I cannot have the control. Yeah, to... I did not have the control. Hello, everyone. May the peace of God be upon you. Um, or, uh, react. So I will try to I share my screen. Is still not on Kamenia, Dr. Fatma. We cannot see the slides yet. Yeah, okay. Well, I see you, Aslan, but I'm going to see you and see the slides. Yalla, yalla, aftah, aftah, just a moment. We see you, or we see the slides now. Uh, how can I share? Uh, okay, here. Uh, I don't want back, to... Back. Uh, stop sharing. I want to share the... Let me You've open. got 15 minutes, Dr. Fatma. Okay, okay. I'm oh, happy to select Windows. This is my account.
Can you see my slides now? Uh, we see slides 20, 28. You can go. Okay. This is the last slide. But you've got many slides, so uh, please can. So, no, no, so short slides. <laughs> okay. okay. Three minutes. Okay, thank you. Assalamu alaikum, all, and thank you so much for having us. Uh, really, we are uh, delighted yeah. to be uh, here today. And uh, um, we are so uh, happy to share with you this presentation. Uh, before starting, I want to uh, thank the Economic Research Forum for uh, the second acceptation for uh, this uh, uh, series of conferences and uh, the Dubai International Financial Center. And uh, I will start my presentation. <laughs> Uh, so uh, today I will uh, try to present uh, a progress paper done with my colleagues, Dr. Hendel Afisan and Dr. Jihan Boutrich. And uh, my presentation will be, um, uh, uh, as uh, you can see, I will try to introduce uh, the topic and the contribution uh, related to our paper, uh, what the, the literature review can uh, tell us. And then uh, uh, our research design, which will be uh, divided into approaches, and I will conclude and uh, uh, share with you some uh, recommendations. Uh, okay, so uh, as uh, um, you can see, so uh, the outbreak of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic so, uh, originated from China, uh, China's December 2019 continues to uh, spread globally as uh, um, there have been uh, more than 115 uh, million confirmed cases around the world and more than 2.5 million deaths and these statistics are coming up to 3rd March 2021. Uh, and as reported by uh, the uh, World Health Organization, Saudi Arabia has registered more than uh, uh, 378,000 uh, confirmed cases and more than 6,500 deaths. Uh, in the, the slides, you can see uh, some graphs related to the total number of uh, confirmed cases, uh, daily new cases, and total deaths, as well as the new cases versus the new recoveries in the Saudi Arabia. This is uh, to give you some uh, uh, idea about. Uh, 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 the data in Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, so our uh, uh, paper um, will try to uh, fill, uh, fill the gap in the uh, literature and uh, try to co contribute to the current debate on uh, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic context, uh, mainly in two uh, ways. First of all, um, uh, we will try to investigate on a highly important and uh, current issue uh, as COVID-19 uh, is producing uh, the biggest global uh, uh, crisis uh, in generation, transferring shocks, waves into economics and uh, humanities around the, the world. Uh, also, uh, we are uh, uh, trying to share with you new original uh, data uh, considering case study of Saudi Arabia, uh, inshallah to be exploited, and uh, um, uh, our contribution as most the empirical studies uh, on the literature review based on uh, only microeconomic panel data uh, and uh, uh, considering common results. So we we'll try to make any uh, case study results. Uh, secondly, our uh, empirical analysis is uh, um, based on, um, on uh, yani, uh, uh, surveys done by the uh, general, uh, Saudi General Authority for Statistics, labor for surveys for two waves, 2019 and uh, 2020. Um, so to our knowledge, so we are yani, the first to use this type of data. Uh, for Saudi Arabia, and uh, uh, we will uh, uh, set ourselves apart from uh, the previous words in this uh, uh, report by uh, adopting uh, two uh, approaches, uh, let's say uh, macro and microeconomics approaches or theoretical and empirical approaches in the same study. 
Uh, okay, what uh, the uh, literature review tell us? I will try to يعني, uh, go so quickly through this uh, يعني, uh, uh, recent uh, studies working on uh, the uh, topic of uh, the impact of uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, economic impact of COVID-19. So uh, pandemics are not just a medical phenomenon, but uh, often a humanity, uh, يعني, but, but also affect a humanity on various intensities, uh, producing troubles as a stigma, xenophobia, panic, and stress, which are يعني, uh, main aspects of societal impact of epidemics, contagious outbreaks. Uh, more than this, the pandemic of COVID-19 continues to, co to cause an enormous shock to both real economies and financial sector. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of people uh, may lose their occupation or occupations or ask to take unpaid leave for some times for the coming months, for example, manufacturers stopping their producing uh, productions, um, uh, closing schools and public gatherings in many countries. And uh, tourist destinations are abandoned, which affects many uh, uh, countries, sectors and regions. Uh, uh, other studies uh, shows that uh, uh, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic it's also يعني, uh, can be uh, differentiated by sector. So it's the study of Al Ghamidi uh, and uh, all uh, for 2021. And in their study, they tried to investigate the volatility of oil prices in Saudi Arabia uh, during the period of January to June 2020. And uh, uh, the funding of these results uh, uh, showing that market condition transformed with a sharp decline in prices and prices gradually recovered until يعني, June. And they highlight in their study that the significant and positive effect of this ratio of COVID-19 on oil price dynamics uh, يعني, and uh, uh, underline also the risk of death on financial markets by uh, increasing the economic uh, instability. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, concerning our uh, research uh, design, uh, uh, we uh, adopt, as I say, two uh, uh, approaches, uh, theoretical or let's say macroeconomic approach and empirical approaches related to uh, uh, surveys. So the first uh, approach, it's uh, modified the new Keynesian open economy model. Uh, the objective is to stimulate the economic consequences of the COVID-19 in Saudi Arabia, and in which we introduce a negative health shock on the uh, supply side uh, of the economy as a reduction in labor utilization and under and change in labor costs in order to measure the output loss related to the pandemic. Concerning the uh, second approach, uh, uh, here we... Um, uh, adopt uh, uh, cross-sectional data analysis using uh, order probit model uh, to measure the impact of uh, uh, some uh, economic uh, variables uh, uh, related to the COVID-19, uh, based on, as I say, on surveys from uh, General Authority for uh, Statistics. So I will uh, start by the first part. So uh, here, uh, as I say, so the uh, objective is uh, to, uh, uh, to see through uh, 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 a macroeconomic approach how the uh, COVID-19 uh, can uh, 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 impact uh, the Saudi economy. So the epidemic diseases are expected to constitute an important burden to the economic and social welfare. And as uh, uh, this epidemic uh, pulled the global economy into an expected situation by uh, exposing the companies and investors to high risk with a loss of revenues so, uh, and benefits so, uh, for uh, some firms uh, uh, and uh, the total blockage of the economic activities for others. We, uh, we, we will try to discuss through this uh, direct costs and indirect costs. So uh, direct costs related to medical care spending of public sectors to support medical practices and medication and hospitalizations 
and uh, also uh, align it with the common insight of the diseases cost and direct cost related to the productivity uh, losses and uh, reduction in labor supply. So uh, the model is uh, based uh, on uh, uh, households and producers, and uh, um, uh, we, we try to develop from the out, uh, outside of the households. Uh, uh, we use a dynamic uh, stochastic general equilibrium model uh, to measure these uh, various costs of illness and its impact on the economic uh, performance. So our assumptions, uh, yani, uh, that hypothesis that we will uh, use, we uh, have um, uh, our utility uh, uh, function uh, based uh, on a Coup, uh, standard Coupe de glass uh, version. But uh, uh, we suppose that uh, we have direct decrease in health shock, uh, uh, relocation of income from non-health to health sector, and uh, loss of time by spending time sick divided into lost of working time and uh, into uh, lost leisure time. From the uh, 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 side of producers or firms, the impact of illness uh, often includes the cost of decreasing production as an important economic burden, and we adopt the, uh, in this way the human uh, capital uh, approach. So as I say, we, uh, we, uh, we have a production function, standard cup de glass. Uh, our uh, function, it, uh, where the uh, A, the labor productivity, the uh, K, the capital stock, and Epsilon is the supply shock, and Alpha is the cup de glass exponent for the labor. So the marginal uh, product of labor is presented by the equation uh, uh, number three, sorry. And, uh, uh, and the log uh, linearization of the expression three defined the expression of the real, most, uh, the real marginal uh, cost. Uh, for the uh, calibration, we run the simulation by uh, simulations by distributing the st uh, steady state equilibrium in period zero, and we trust the impulse model's response over 60 periods. We calibrate the model using parameters for uh, so I obtained it from the literature and we try to stimulate the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. We apply a negative shock on the exogenous variable health uh, stock, we, we call it H, and we stimulate the reaction of several micro uh, variables in the model, such as the consumption, health and non-health goods, production and uh, capital and leisure and labor. These uh, are the uh, main uh, results, as you can see. Uh, uh, results uh, show a uh, sense news response for all uh, the variables when uh, the shock of health is affected. So the consumption uh, of health good increases by uh, 1%. Uh, in fact, an, um, an affected uh, household by the uh, COVID-19 will uh, see its uh, resources decreasing due to the indirect costs of uh, the pandemic. Uh, also, uh, the results show that uh, in uh, the first period, consumption drops but recovers uh, in the next uh, period. Uh, the affected uh, households will, uh, will increase, will increase uh, uh, his spending, especially for uh, uh, the uh, medicines and uh, uh, the visits to hospitals, despite the drop in the, his resources uh, during the pandemic time. Uh, also, the, um, the household will spend more time being sick at home than spending time at work. Uh, the time allocated for leisure will increase and the time allocated to work will uh, decrease. And uh, uh, from uh, results also, so COVID, uh, the pandemic, uh, impact the working age individuals in the job market to the risk of uh, uh, contamination and death in uh, the uh, lockdown. Blacken, uh, impulse response for the labor uh, shows a decrease in the quantity of labor supplied, affecting the production. Uh, affecting the production. Uh, these are uh, the main results. So I will go through uh, the second part. 
so related to the second approach, which is the microeconomic approach. So um, uh, data employed in this study are obtained, as I say, from the uh, labor force survey, uh, surveys for two, uh, two different waves, Q2 for 2019 and 2020. So uh, we use as a, a dependent variable, a question repeated in both surveys, which is uh, uh, what is the net monthly wage, cash and other that the individual received in the uh, last month of this main uh, uh, work, on his main work. So uh, the idea is as a proxy for the uh, income. So we uh, apply uh, this um, a variable is rearranged in three categories, low income, medium income, high income. Me uh, low income is between uh, zero and 5,000, uh, middle uh, between uh, five and 10,000 and higher than 10,000 is considered as a high income. Uh, for the independent variables, we uh, took uh, some variables, uh, uh, gender, age, nationality, marital status, qualification, institutional sector. Here we will try to uh, point out the private sector and to see the impact uh, of, uh, on the private sector. Then uh, another um, uh, variable, which is the change, our change. And uh, 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 during uh, uh, the survey of 2020 related to the uh, impact of COVID-19. And uh, another um, variable uh, included uh, will be um, exploded on uh, uh, during the uh, wave of 2020, which is a regional dummy. We, uh, we consider three uh, regions, uh, capital uh, only Riyadh, north and east region, Lifiha Al Juf, northern border Al Qasim, Al eastern region, Tabuk, Ha'el, southern and western region, Lifiha Abha, Al Medina, Jazan, Asir, Wa Mecca, Wa Najran. Uh, these are some uh, descriptive statistics related to the uh, dependent variable and uh, to the region, uh, to the uh, regions. Uh, I will uh, go directly through the uh, results. Uh, so we um, estimate five models. Model one and model two uh, uh, are um, uh, uh, the objectives is to see the difference between uh, before the COVID and during the COVID, how the uh, variables are uh, impacting the, um, the income. And uh, model uh, three, four, and five, uh, we concentrate on uh, during the COVID-20 and we, uh, we uh, add um, uh, regional analysis to see the difference between, uh, uh, between regions. So the most important results uh, are that uh, uh, from these uh, estimations are that outcomes reveals that people who achieved a higher degree of schooling seems to be not affected during the COVID-19. So the findings are confirming uh, in some studies, previous studies, that the short-term employment change for high-skilled and permanent employees is marginal than for other groups of workers, and uh, the negative impact is more pronounced for low-skilled workers. Another uh, result is that the effect is more intensive in uh, capital and uh, the southern and western region. The COVID-19 is more marked for non-Saudi and private sector. Uh, also, a one-point increase in the private sector occurs in 6.2% for 2019 and 5.3% in 2020, augmentations in the probability of being in the low income level. And uh, finally, the COVID-19 pandemic is having a negative effect on working hours and uh, earnings. So the, per, uh, the prison crisis and the economic sh uh, sh shutdown due to the uh, healthy procedures uh, lead to an uh, unprecedented increase in the number of workers absent from uh, work uh, or working uh, reducing hours. Other explanation, workers lose their job or their contract is not renewed. Uh, workers remain employed, but they enter temporarily on lay uh, off. Or also workers remain employed, but they work only a fraction of their uh, usual, uh, usual uh, hours. Uh, these are our most important uh, results. So I uh, will go directly through the, uh, uh, to share with you some uh, uh, recommendations. So, um, 
the Saudi government يعني, uh, uh, tried to control uh, the pandemic very well and uh, uh, has pronounced a set of packages targeting the private sectors. Uh, such, for example, the exemption and the postponement of some government uh, dues, uh, providing financial support to the banking and the small and medium enterprises uh, sec uh, uh, sectors and also uh, providing uh, some subsidy up to 60% of uh, Saudi employees' salary in the private sector. Uh, another, uh, um, uh, uh, another uh, uh, objective or another issue done, it's what uh, Sama uh, injected 13.3 uh, 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 billions into uh, the banking sector. Uh, also, uh, other uh, recommendations, uh, COVID-19 can have uh, uh, disproportionate impact on certain segments of population as uh, um, uh, founded by our results. Uh, um, and uh, 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 also proactive large scale and integrated measures are necessary to make a strong and sustainable impact. Uh, careful monit uh, monitoring and, uh, of the direct and indirect effects uh, of all the intervention and crucial to ensure uh, uh, the government policy responses uh, that are uh, appropriate. So uh, thank you very much for your listening and I hope that I uh, respect the time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, this, this is interesting approach that you had. Uh, uh, Thank you. And I'm glad to uh, know that the uh, uh, the central department of statistics are having those surveys and detailed surveys on gender and, yeah. uh, and so on, which is good. Okay, the third presentation or the last presentation, and then we'll have uh, some time for discussion is uh, the economic consequences of COVID-19 in MENA region, do country specific characteristics matter by Ilham, Hawass, uh, by Ai Hong. Can you hear me? Hi. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, yes, I can hear you. Uh, yes, uh, let I'm me. Sorry, see. but the voice is not very clear at all for the interpretation. Uh, if you could speak uh, closer into the mic, Dr. Hai. You can uh, see my screen now? You can see, but there is some Yes, sound. I can see your screen, but there is a background noise which might compromise the interpretation. I'm sorry. Is this good now? No. I think, I think there is some noise coming. I don't know from where. Oh, so. Um, there might be some um, mobile, yeah, oh. it's gone quiet now, that's okay. good. No, 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 okay, now it's good. Yes. Yeah, so maybe uh, due to my... It's uh, much better now. Computer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is, uh, is all good now? You can hear me clearly? Yes. Yes, we can yes. hear you. Thank you so much. So uh, first of all, my name is Hai Hong Chun. So I'm uh, uh, this paper I'm doing uh, with uh, uh, Dr. Iham Hawass. So he is busy today with a uh, 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 professional commitment. So that's why I will be presenting this paper. So, um, go through the introduction. Uh, COVID-19 pandemic um, has uh, a negative uh, effect uh, 
a permanent change to the worry commit. Um, and uh, the outbreak generates soft uh, disruption to the global uh, economic activity. Um, and it generates the uh, susceptibility of vulnerable country and um, uh, is the somehow affect uh, our achievement of the sustainable development goal uh, at the cheese by uh, 2030. Um, as an uh, external uh, exogenous stock, uh, the pandemic uh, created disruption in economic activity as both national and regional uh, uh, level. And uh, the this also create a resident shock affected by the inflow of uh, foreign direct investment into the Middle East and North America, uh, North Africa, uh, MENA region. The COVID-19 has uh, put a significant effect like uh, on uh, globally, especially uh, MENA region as uh, we have uh, gone through the, the two pre previous uh, um, paper uh, in Saudi Arabia. Um, and uh, the impact of pandemic stock includes um, uh, negative effect on employment, uh, poverty rate, demand production activity. Uh, and so that's why it's, uh, it's very crucial to to uh, investigate uh, the effect of COVID-19, uh, especially for uh, middle-income countries like uh, Egypt, Jordan, Morocco. And uh, so that's why for this study, we do a specific uh, investigation for MENA, uh, MENA country. For the literature review, uh, empirical uh, previous empirical study uh, have uh, document uh, a review of economic consequence of COVID-19 uh, and uh, it's uh, the, the report of uh, ESCWA um, uh, document that the main country could face a loss of uh, uh, 42 billion of the GDP and 1.2% uh, increase in uh, Employ unemployment rates and lose over 1.7 million jobs uh, in 2020. And um, that's also the trade off between the um, uh, coronavirus uh, and COVID 19 pandemic and our economic growth. And, um, and it could be even deeper uh, without this containment measure. It, the fact uh, of the COVID-19 uh, uh, has been documented worldwide, uh, but however, uh, they still need to look specific for vulnerable country uh, like in MENA region, uh, particularly like middle income country uh, like Egypt, Jordan, Morocco, uh, Mauritania, and Tasnia. Uh, so that's why this research a motivated uh, uh, by uh, a specific investigation of COVID-19 pandemic on the main country. Uh, first of all, for the methodology, we uh, employ a panel data uh, using the daily data of uh, COVID-19 number of cases and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, between uh, February uh, 2020 and uh, February 2021. Um, for the first model to evaluate the impact of pandemic on the economic uh, development, uh, we use a uh, cross domestic product per capita as our uh, main dependent variable. And so we also control for uh, uh, pollution, uh, population uh, stringency index and uh, some other variable like hand washing for city and life expectancy. We employ the second model to uh, evaluate uh, the effect of COVID-19 pandemic on the human development measure. Uh, so we use the human capital index for, 
for the development dependent and um, we employ the same set of control variable as we use in model one. So this is the summary statistic um, for 18 country uh, in the MENA region, uh, including um, Algeria, Bahrain, Egypt, Iran, Iraq, Israel, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Libya, Morocco, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Tunisia, United Arab Emirates, and Yemen. So we employ a panel data, uh, a panel daily data uh, over a uh, one year period uh, between 20, uh, February 2020 to February 2021. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, the total case uh, here, uh, we have a maximum case of uh, uh, 1.5 million uh, maximum uh, across the MANA country over one year period. So we visualize the, the total COVID-19 case and uh, number of that uh, for 18 country. Uh, you can have a look that uh, the pandemic uh, have and the total case and the total that have a comparable chance and uh, it reached the peak around uh, in the middle of 2020. Uh, and you can see that, uh, for example, in the United Arab uh, Emirates, UAE, so the number of total COVID-19 case uh, has been volatile uh, compared to other country. So this is our empirical result. Uh, we employed the uh, 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 homogeneous uh, pa uh, panel model for uh, for our uh, analysis, and we can easily document that the negative effect uh, of the COVID nineteen uh, on the on the GDP, uh, and also uh, for for example for the population. Uh, uh, and uh, we cluster uh, for, we include the robust and cluster robust uh, standard error by country and time. And uh, the results are uh, significant at 1% level. So after evaluate the pandemic on the economic role, we now investigate the effect of COVID-19 on the human development uh, measure. And uh, uh, not surprisingly, uh, we document a negative effect uh, between COVID-19 and human development. Uh, and uh, using the same empirical strategy, uh, we first run the poor, uh, poor OS ordinary list where regression uh, of COVID-19 on human development. And uh, we can find the, in the column one, we can find the negative uh, correlation between COVID-19 and uh, human capital development. So for our overall result, um, at uh, mentioned earlier, so for this paper, we, uh, we do a specific investigation of the effect of COVID-19 on the economy uh, and its consequent specifically for the MENA country. As forecast, uh, COVID-19 has uh, negatively significantly affected uh, the economy of MENA region. Um, and uh, the empirical results show that uh, uh, given 1% increase in the total, total of COVID-19 uh, case, uh, the GDP per capita decreased by 1.5% uh, approximately in the MENA region. And the result also showed that uh, the negative impact of COVID-19 on the human capital index and stringency index. So uh, stringency index here is uh, the measure to evaluate a country 
for example, uh, to fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. For example, school uh, closure, uh, office closure, uh, social distancing. Uh, and given 1% increase is the COVID-19 number of cases in the matter country, the human capital index and the Chinese index are reduced by 0.8% and 0.02% respectively. So in general, um, specifically for MENA country, we um, experience a negative uh, effect of COVID-19 uh, on the MENA region economy in general. Uh, the results are so consistent when we include a country's characteristics using robust regression by country and cluster by country in time. Um, and the results are statistically significant at 5 and 10% level. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Hyde. That was a good presentation. Uh, now the floor is open for any questions or comments to the three, on the three papers, on Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and the MENA region. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I am supposed to be uh, the lead discussant, so I have very few comments to make so that yeah, uh, we there'll be you enough. Yes, you're right. Okay. Uh, starting with the paper by uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Professor uh, Dr. Gilan and Dr. Suleiman Al Gutsi and Al Awadi, uh, this is a very interesting paper. And uh, it's a very nice application of the CGE. And I think the policy simulation is most interesting. However, uh, and I do understand that this is taken from a larger report. So my comments here will be much more on a complementary constructive uh, comments. I think uh, the TFP assumption that you can actually in a cumulative uh, sense, in two years, you can actually improve the, TSP, the TFP by 10%. Uh, I think this is kind of a, a rather difficult, uh, unlikely assumption, and it needs to be justified, especially since we know that uh, in the GCC countries, uh, in fact, in most developing countries, uh, productivity component of gross uh, performance is usually not the not the strongest component. Uh, even the East Asian miracle was uh, a miracle of accumulation. And we know that, at least we know that for the UAE, for example, and I'm sure this is for all the GCC countries, because of the, uh, the labor policy, uh, is that actually uh, labor productivity is actually quite low, uh, in addition to total factor productivity. And, uh, uh, you know, I have, I have done a paper with, uh, there are two papers, one by myself and Raimundo Soto for the Dubai, and another one by Ilham Hawass and uh, Raimundo Soto for uh, UAE. And I think this is quite typical. So it would be interesting actually to show, even though, uh, you know, this is just as a background to show the profile of total factor productivity and labor productivity in the Kuwaiti economy, uh, so that can actually people see uh, where Kuwaiti stand and the extent to which this assumption can be uh, can be justified. In fact, I, 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 I surmise that it will be very difficult to justify because I think while the orientation towards knowledge and uh, and and building knowledge economy is 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 is, is a very uh, commendable. Uh, uh, strategy, it does take time. I mean, if we just think of how Singapore or Hong Kong, uh, for example, uh, moved, uh, f you know, forward uh, along the productivity path, there were considerable institutional uh, uh, reforms uh, that has been developed over time. So I, I think this would be because this is such a key assumption. I think it would be important to 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 justify it. Um, the, the, 
you know, obviously this is a CGE model that has a specific purpose. Uh, I assume that it is focused on the real side of the economy, but for the sake of policy, I think it would be important also, even if it is not part of the model, to say something about the monetary side of the, of the economy because of the dependence on, uh, on oil and on investment. Kuwait, for example, uh, as I understand, uh, has managed to diversify its portfolio of uh, offshore investment. And during the time of the, the, the 2020, the stock markets, actually the, the, uh, the return to stocks has been quite significant as opposed to, uh, to bonds uh, because of the low interest rate. So how did Kuwait finance uh, these subsidies or a stimulus policy uh, as big as it is? It would be interesting to actually just at least make an argument that perhaps maybe uh, the trade-off are minimal in terms of uh, subsidizing uh, or stimulating, let me say, I should say, stimulating uh, economic activity at the private sector level. And uh, I think another inter interesting point that it would be useful to, to discuss, regardless of whether it is part of the model or not, is the, is the, is the, is the dollar, uh, sorry, is the, is the basket peg of Kuwait as opposed to other uh, GCC countries that has a straight dollar peg. The extent to which it has actually benefited uh, Kuwait in terms of adjustment at the, at the exchange rate and monetary level, because uh, this is a situation where global interest rates were very low and the oil price was, uh, uh, took a hit. So therefore there is a, a congruence, there is actually coherence between the numerator currencies and the, uh, and the follower currency. So the Kuwaiti dinar, for example, uh, is, is likely to have devalued relative to the Asian economies, for example. Uh, how much of an effect this might have on the competitiveness of the, of the Kuwaiti industries? Uh, I think this, I understand that these issues are beyond the, GCC, uh, the, the CGE, but they are very fundamental issues given the nature of the, of the Kuwaiti economy. But I think this is, a, this is an excellent paper and uh, perhaps this uh, abridged version uh, can actually be a little bit more informative by uh, giving some background statistics and, and also uh, showing how the model works uh, in terms of the key equations and, and, and so on. Uh, the second paper uh, on Saudi Arabia I think this is a particularly distinguished paper because of the idea, the idea of having a theoretical uh, approach and an empirical approach. Uh, and I think the idea of using the new Keynesian uh, model uh, with uh, the health shock uh, involved in both the utility and the, and the supply side, the production function is most interesting. And I think it is really very good. My only comment here is that uh, I see uh, the, the statement of the utility function, uh, 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 the modified utility function that includes the, the, the health shock and, 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 and the channels through which it works. Uh, and also on the, on the supply side in terms of the production function. Uh, at least the version of the paper that we have Uh, does not go beyond and tell us uh, the option combined uh, that might link uh, 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 on the one side and then the, the utility function uh, on the other side. Uh, so at least it is not really very clear for us uh, at this moment. Uh, in the paper that we uh, have, the version, it was an early version, uh, the empirical model was not, of course, uh, 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 stated at that time, but I can see now from the presentation that we do have a, a very interesting uh, empirical model. And uh, I would say 
now wearing the hat of my uh, institutional role as uh, ERF, uh, I will say that uh, both papers will be most welcome uh, for, uh, for us to consider, uh, uh, you know, uh, once they are completed, uh, 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 especially the second paper, because uh, the, 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 the draft we have was, was incomplete. Finally, um, the paper by uh, uh, first of all, this is uh, this is a paper that actually uh, is is is, a, is an epitome of the uh, international cooperation across uh, across three uh, continents, uh, from Af sub-Saharan Africa to the Middle East to uh, to the Pacific. So this is actually most interesting. The authors come from three uh, uh, different uh, uh, backgrounds in terms of their, uh, their uh, academic uh, basis. Uh, this is, uh, again, the version that we have is very, was very preliminary, but I think the version that was presented is, uh, is, is, is complete. It's most interesting, it looks at the uh, Human Development Index, and it look at gross, and I think the results are, are, are most interesting. The only comment I have is that uh, I was wondering whether, even though the the, the authors control for the size of population, but I was wondering whether you might not like to uh, reestimate using uh, the ratio of uh, in uh, the number of infected people to the total population. So that actually the, 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 the regressor becomes comparable across countries because you do have countries which have small population, countries which have very sized population. And then also in terms of fatality, fatalities relative to the infected. So that will be much more comparable uh, indicators in terms of the rate, uh, the rate of infection and then also uh, the rate of death relative to the infected because, because that actually will give you a very nice hand, handle to assess the quality of the, or the robustness of the health system. Because if, for example, the, uh, the, 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 the death per infected is low, uh, that will tell you something about the quality of the, of the, of the health system response. And then the number of uh, infected to population will give you a nice handle about the measures that were taken to level the infection, uh, you, know, the, you know, to level the curve, the infection curve. Because the extent to which you level the infection curve, such as social distancing, such as lockdown and so on, it, it tend to reduce the share of the infected to the, so it would be much more meaningful uh, policy uh, value from uh, that you can gain from the regression. Uh, but overall, the three papers are, are most interesting. And uh, we really look forward to, to see the revised versions. And uh, I think uh, thank you all uh, for delivering such interesting set of papers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ibrahim. I also showed, uh, shared Dr. Ibrahim that I am happily surprised uh, to see the presentations because the papers that we had, at least the the, uh, the second paper and the third paper, were not as detailed and as uh, as well structured as the presentations. Which means that there has been lots of progress since uh, we received the uh, first drafts. Uh, so, at least myself, I'm happily surprised of the presentations as compared to what we what we had. Uh, so they're a lot more yeah. detailed and structured. Uh, thank you. Is there any question or um, Dr. Mejid, uh, I think there were a couple of questions in the Q&A that Dr. Fatma responded to, but we have Dr. Muawiya al awad who has a, quest, uh, a hand raised. For Dr. Muawiya, you can... Uh, Dr. Muawiya? Oh, uh, there's another question as well from uh, um, His Excellency Dr. Ab Abdurrah. Abdul Rahman Al Hamidi and um, yeah, and they both have the floor for you to consider. Yeah, th thank you very much. All all papers are really interesting. I have very short uh, questions for papers one and three, and 
a small comment on paper two. For paper one, in addition to what uh, Dr. Ibrahim mentioned, Uh, in terms of the agile is the Kuwait economy. So agility is very important here. And uh, uh, I agree of, uh, that it's really difficult to implement. Um, and the CGE is always uh, uh, oversimplifies uh, the outcome. For uh, paper three, I, I can, I, I, I wish to, uh, challenge the result when it says 1% uh, increase in COVID cases decreases GDP by 1.4%. We all know that in MENA, the increases in, GD in uh, COVID cases were more than 100%. So I don't uh, know, it's not clear from the presentation how this variable was calculated. And Dr. Brahim also mentioned this. I think it should be, it's not the COVID cases, but it should be the percentage of COVID cases out of the total population to be, uh, uh, is, the, is the accurate measure in this case to look at the impact of GDP because we don't care if it's one, one or 2%, we care about, it's like how, how the percentage of the population of the labor force who are now unable to function as before, this is how GDP is affected in addition, of course, to the effect that comes from consumption and so on. For paper two, uh, I, I like the uh, empirical part very much, but I think the, uh, the transition from the theoretical part to the empirical part was not as strong. So um, probably because uh, the uh, presentation was short or uh, uh, of something else. This is a quick comment. Thank you. Thank you. If intervention or questions from uh, Shireen, Dr. Shireen, who has raised the hand? I don't see it here. I've, it was His Excellency Dr. Al Hamidi, and I've, uh, I've, uh, he has the floor if he wants it. He's uh, a panelist at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Abdurrahman, are you with us? From the AMF, Dr. Abdurrahman, the Arab Monetary Fund, right? Yes. Yes. He's I don't see his name here with us. He's on the panelist list, AMF underscore His Excellency, Dr. Abdurrahman. He's a panelist. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't think he's uh, responding. So maybe we can, uh, we can deal with the first questions. Okay. Is there any other question? or comments. Okay, we're just about ready for the second uh, session. Is it possible to respond to the remarks made or what? Y yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay. just briefly, uh, because of uh, particularly the first point of uh, the assumptions about uh, Total factor productivity. I, I really want to stress one fact. This is not an, econometr an econometric model, it's a CGE. In CGE, the kind of simulations we do is about what if scenarios, what if, which means we know total factor productivity in Kuwait is low, but uh, the circumstances is that unless something is radically changed, recovery is difficult to achieve. So, what if? government considers supply side intervention rather than always using demand side, side stimulus, uh, what if government undertakes? Yes, for example, if you look at year after year publications of IMF on total factor productivity, uh, quantification of different countries, 
we are aware, I totally agree, but we are not projecting existing reality, but we are trying to experiment with alternative what if scenarios that that that's the main point I wanted to raise in by that's why I ask it. Otherwise, okay. everything else is perfectly valid. I agree, for example, it is not financial. It's not a financial, it's a CGE real side. We, do, we haven't done anything to do with uh, financial uh, components and uh, exchange rates and, and the likes. Exchange rates is fixed uh, the way uh, we had it. And uh, the other details of presentations will come out in uh, when we write uh, papers and book chapters, which are uh, in the pipeline at the moment. So I just wanted to raise that, that main distinction, major distinction between um, econometric models and, and uh, uh, CG models. And we deliberate and aware that we are not forecasting existing reality, but proposing alternative uh, what if scenarios. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Dr. Fatma. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for your comments and uh, your remarks. Uh, so I will try to uh, answer to some comments. So unfortunately, we uh, we didn't succeed to yani, uh, su submit the final paper at the yani, uh, good day. So and uh, they put only the proposal. So alhamdulillah, now we have uh, let's say a fa not finalized but a progress. Uh, uh, working paper. Uh, uh, I am totally uh, okay with the command that uh, up to now we are trying to find a strong connection between the uh, first part and the second part. And in case that, as you know, that when we start working in the paper, really we don't have data. The idea it's uh, uh, from the beginning in Saudi Arabia, how we will see the impact without data. So uh, we go through macroeconomic uh, uh, approach, microeconomics, but alhamdulillah, uh, we succeed to get any good data from the um, uh, labor uh, uh, force surveys uh, after uh, starting working on a simulation and uh, uh, general equilibrium. And the, the idea was how to connect these two parts together as it is a case study related to the uh, Saudi Arabia. So we're still working on this point and uh, inshallah uh, we will try to connect these two parts and we thanks Dr. Uh, Ibrahim for the proposition that inshallah when we get the final uh, a draft you will uh, send it to you. Uh, related to the uh, uh, first part, uh, to the marginal product of labor, uh, uh, so the model is with uh, any more details in the uh, paper, and we are trying now to add new other variables like uh, prices, wages, to see uh, the, the impact and the, the responses um, on, uh, uh, by graphs and to interpret it. Uh, I hope that uh, I answered to the comments and it, uh, destined to me. If you have any other questions, I am open to uh, to answer it. Thank you very much. If anyone has, shukran, shukran, they can they can send you through the ERF yeah. any, any specific comments. Exactly, shukran. Please, uh, uh, Doctor He, Hey, Hey Hong. On the issue of the number of cases as to the relative number of cases as a uh, as a share of total. The third paper. Do you have any any comment on the on Dr. Ibrahim's and Dr. Maawiya's suggestion? Uh, first of all, um, uh, thank you so much for your valuable comment on uh, on the paper. So um, I will check in detail. And actually, that's a very good uh, question. Uh, I, I will check in detail to see that whether the, the affected uh, population, uh, specific case, number of case, and uh, the, on the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, because uh, we, as we uh, I have answered the question before. That's for for the number of COVID nineteen cases we use daily data, and for other economic variable we use the quarterly data data based, and we must do uh, data set together to get a final data set in daily 
based and um, so, uh, for for the for the COVID nineteen uh, and uh, for the population, uh, we take uh, a natural uh, logarithm uh, to convert uh, those measure uh, in the percentage. Uh, so that's why uh, I, I will check in detail with my uh, principal investigator, and I'm uh, very happy to stay in touch and get back to you uh, with a very detailed. Uh, updated result. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. It seems that Abdurrah uh, Abdurrahman is with us now. Abdurrahman Hamidi. Abu Munif. Ahlan wa sahlan. Tfadhar. Ala. It's very good to see you personally, and it's very good to see also everybody, even though it's virtual. Just for everybody that um, Majid Al Munif is one of my teachers when I was going to college. Uh, early on, and I remember this, and I have learned a great deal out of Abomnif. Uh, I I have no specific comments Thank you. on. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I have no I have no specific comments on the three papers. I think the three papers are the presentations are good. I I, I think they have good models, but f from where I work now, can I bring? another issue which I think could be important either for this meeting or later on. When we had the crisis in 2008, everybody knows that it started from the financial sector, then it went on from the real economy. This time it's from health to the real economy to the financial sector, and therefore it's much more deeper than the one in 2008. And I remember in 2008, we started talking early about the exit strategy. My worry now, it is still nobody speaking about exit strategy and the focus on, which is understandable. The focus on is how to deal with the current crisis. However, I think the extent of this crisis is not yet over. The impact on human capital, the impact on uh, productivity, the impact of other sectors of the economy. However, I believe it is critical with ERF to focus also on the exit strategy. And I would like to mention three issues in that. Take the financial sector, the banking. The, I think they're, they're probably going to be a moral hazard. There is deferred payments uh, especially for individuals and SMEs, and that could have a high uh, non-performing loans later on. And therefore, this issue got to be looked at, at early on. There are macro prudential issues, whether it is capital adequacy, liquidity, etc. all those ratios and those we need to prepare early on. How are we going to build back those macro prudential. The third one and the most critical in my view is the government debt. Now the government is accumulating debt. For how long they can sustain this and what, are, what is going to be done when this crisis is over. Uh, the, the worry now at the international level, we will go from health crisis to a debt crisis. And I think it is I, it's essential for this forum to discuss the exit strategy. We at the AMF, we discuss those issues at the level of ministers of uh, finance, at the level of uh, central bank governors. However, you may understand that issues at hand at this time are too much. You don't need to add another issue. However, at research level, I think we should start thinking about the exit strategy. Thank you so much, and I hope that everybody will keep themselves healthy and it's good to see everybody, even though virtually. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I think this is a you know, good uh, uh, suggestion to look how to compare the two uh, crises that we had, the financial crisis, the one and the real one uh, this time. Uh, probably that might be one of the issues that the ERF can take it up in one of their uh, seminars 
or uh, webinars in comparison of the two and the exit part. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abdurrahman. I know that we've taken more than, in this session, more than our share, it's 15 minutes more. more. So apologies, because we've got another session uh, coming up on labor. Uh, I think the uh, firms and labor market responses. So uh, I'd like to thank the uh, uh, Two presenters of the three excellent uh, uh, papers for the great insights on the uh, on the impact of the COVID-19 on the, the two countries and on the MENA uh, region, on Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and the MENA uh, region. And I'd like the, uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Ibrahim uh, El Badawi for his uh, insights into the three. Uh, papers and uh, I'd like to thank and uh, we'd like to thank you for chairing the session, Dr. Majid. We're very grateful, very grateful, and